you're just talking to me, mm -hmm. okay? So tell me your name and what district you work for. My name is Paula Collymore and I work for Mesa Public Schools. How many um, of these sessions have you been to? Um, I've been to all four, plus I was at the Kindergarten Summit. Okay, so you've been with us for quite a bit of time. Tell me um, what this has meant to you as a teacher. Um, it's made me a better teacher, and I know that because of parent feedback. Um, my administrator has um, started trusting me with the more difficult children. Um, the way I'm handling them, the way my classroom is set up, it's engaging, it's keeping the children um, thinking, not necessarily about behavior issues, but about learning, mm -hmm. and so those have all been very positive. Um, one of the things that I remember you mentioning is that it, it, this has changed how you perceived yourself as a teacher, and that also, we it's almost that we gave permission for you to have fun again as a classroom teacher. Let's say more about that. Um, I will say that um, it has been a very worksheet-driven environment. We have been told by more than one person that we needed to look like and appear like a first or second grade classroom. Um, there was even discussion of bringing in individual student desks instead of allowing them tables. And um, I've always stuck with tables. I personally enjoy hands-on materials, so I've always allowed my students those opportunities. But being at these classes has allowed me to go back and say even more to encourage even more why we need more. I was able to get a water table this year. I was able to get a dramatic play center this year. Um, I have incorporated blueprints into my um, block area and the children know that they can go over and use the blocks now if they're building a blueprint to show me what they're gonna build. Um, it's just allowed us to have more of those opportunities that they need and need to be able to say this is why we need them. You know, um, as you mentioned your dramatic play area, the, the sociodramatic furniture that you got, please share um, how that process happened and how much you fought for that because that's a pretty big deal. Um, it's taken, I the first class was back last April. Okay. Um, I came back after that very excited, talked to my administrator, told him if I was gonna try this, that I wanted to have those um, materials in the classroom to really be able to say I was being faithful to what needed to be done. And um, he said he would try to make that happen for me. Um, fast forward now to we're basically in April again, and it's finally happened. And I'm serious when I say it's taken me a year. Um, it's taken me a lot of phone calls. It's taken me um, uh, petitioning the PTO members, uh, talking to parents about why it's important. And the funny part is I even had staff members who told me that they thought the parents would be rebellious of me having that, that it would be fun and frivolous and not educational. Mm -hmm. And it's been the exact opposite. I have parents donating things to that center, um, wanting the children to have those experiences. That's so amazing. It's been very positive. That's very cool. And I think that um, have, what has been the feedback from your administration? Have you had any feedback about your classroom and how things are running or even how well the children are doing? Um, test score wise, my students are performing typically higher than my um, teammates, not necessarily in all areas, but in areas. Um, but the things I've noticed that um, are happening are my students are becoming better thinkers. Um, I, I've taught animals in the past, but this year I actually had a student say to me, it's several weeks after we had learned about them, if you're bald, are you a mammal? Mm -hmm. And it was that light bulb <laughs> moment that they were actually starting to think about it and we had to have a discussion about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just took a very large math CRT and for our district and in the process of doing that, I was trying to explain to them, sometimes we have to think backwards. And so I was explaining to them that we will have, we'll see right answers and wrong answers and some will look like right answers. Right. I had one of my students actually say to me, I know it's not that because I know that's A and I know that's A. It has to be that one even though I'm not sure. And he verbalized that to me. And so those kinds of things show me that they're thinking more and it's not just uh, a rote response. It's not something they've memorized. Right, right, right. Well, thank you so, so much for sharing your experiences. Um, is there anything else that you would want to tell either other teachers who are thinking about this or even administrators who are thinking about sending their teachers to these sessions or having us come out to their schools? What would you say? I would say that if you want your teaching staff to be excited about teaching again, 
and you want to see that spark back, these are the classes to come to. And I would say as a teacher, it's well worth the money. Um, even if you have to pay out of pocket, I gained so much information and experience from coming to these um, that I'm actually depressed because the, this is the last in the series. So I'm, I'm really excited because you've mentioned you may be having some more classes yes, and I've already discussed those. So um, my principal's <laughs> already talking about those particular classes because I'm very interested in that. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you.